Today we are going to talk about one of the two things that you can do that isn't get better at a math skill that will improve your GED math score. The other one uh, is to get comfortable and fluent and confident with the calculator. There are lots of calculator GED videos out there. I'll link to a few good ones in the description. Today's video is about the other one, mastering the formulas, the formula sheet. Today we are going to get into what it is, how to use it, and we will practice the actual GED math problems that I stole from the GED people. Um, the idea is that if you're playing like one of those shoot 'em up video games, like first person shooter kind of things, you wanna know before you start playing what kind of weapons you're gonna have access to, like how to get them and how they work and when to use them. That's like the metaphor for knowing the formulas. Hopefully by the end of this video, you will be ready and there will be no surprises when you take the actual test. All right, let's get to it. So there are some good things and some bad things about this formula sheet. Uh, the good thing is that you don't need to memorize anything, that any question they ask you, if it requires a formula, they will tell you the formula. They will give it to you. There won't be any questions where you're expected to have memorized some formula, none of that. That's great, right? The problem is there's just like a ton of stuff. Um, it's a really dense page of formulas that we will look at in just a second. And the tricky part is like knowing where to look and how to find the stuff you need um, so you can, you know, get the stuff right. So let's take a look. Here it is. Hope you're sitting down. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. That is the formula sheet. Um, you'll see that it's sort of organized, uh, geometry stuff is at the top, algebra stuff is at the bottom, there's this weird data stuff in the middle. Um, we'll take this piece by piece and sort of get into what this means in a second. I just want to say that if you're noticing that it says 2014 GED test resources at the top, that doesn't mean it's out of date, it means that they revised the whole GED in 2014 and we're still using that revision, so until they update it, this is what they use. All right, let's talk about how to use it because you don't always need to use it. There's plenty of questions that don't require any kind of formula. So I made this flow chart. I made it. You're welcome. Um, <clears throat> and it basically asks you to ask yourself this question, do I need a formula? And if you don't, just do the question. And if you do, what formula do you need? And then do the question. Finally, get it right. That's my patented formula for formula success. You're welcome. Okay, let's dive into the actual formula sheet. We'll start with geometry. Uh, here is what it looks like. There are some basic things that you're going to need to know um, on the sheet. Some of them will be obvious. Here's a short list. Hopefully you know what area is. Maybe you know what perimeter is or volume, but uh, if you don't, now you should take this opportunity to go look it up. I do want to point out that um, circumference here, that's just a way to say perimeter of a circle. I don't know why they don't say perimeter of a circle. They had to invent a whole new word. I didn't, I didn't do that. Not me. Take it up with whoever invented English. All right, so those are some things you'll need to know. Um, I'm not going to teach you them here. Uh, we don't have time. That would make this video four hours long. There are a lot of um, letters here, uh, abbreviations. So you can see, I've, if you want, you can pause it, uh, the video here and teach yourself what these things stand for, that a capital C is circumference, and that a little b is base, and then et cetera, et cetera. It's all there. You're welcome. Um, you should know this uh, because it won't really make sense. Like if you get to the test and it's, you see a formula that says, SA equals PH plus 2B, like what? That's why you're watching this, so that you can like prepare yourself. Surface area equals the perimeter times the height plus two times the base with area. There you go, for example. Um, you will also need to know all these shapes. Hopefully you learned at least four of these shapes by the time you graduated kindergarten. Um, but I don't know, maybe it's been a while since you saw a trapezoid and you know, you don't necessarily encounter those in your day-to-day -day life. Most people don't. 
Um, there's also three-dimensional shapes. Those are the two-dimensional shapes. A right prism, a rectangular prism. Hopefully you recognize a pyramid and a cone and stuff. You need to know all these things. So again, if you're like, what is he talking about? Just pause the video, make flashcards, take a mental picture, and store it forever. I don't know. Okay, let's look at a question, a geometry question, that you can use this formula sheet to answer. All right, so this question I stole from the GED's own website. This is the um, practice math test, free 10 question math quest, uh, test that you should all take if you haven't already, just Google free GED math test. It's on the GED website. And this question asks, um, an office uses paper drinking cups in the shape of a cone with dimensions as shown to the nearest 10th of a cubic inch. What is the volume of each drinking cup? All right. I don't know about you. I hate these like cone drinking cups. Just do it like a cylinder, just a regular cup. I don't know why they had to, whatever, that's not the issue. So um, the first thing we're going to do is remember the extremely helpful flow chart that I made. And do we even need a formula for this? Yes. Yes, we do need a formula for this. I mean, this is a video about using formulas, so I don't want to spoil anything, but yes, you're going to need a formula for this. And the formula that you're going to need, well, they're asking about volumes of cones. So there's our cone, and let's look on the formula sheet. There's the cone, and there's the volume, the thing with the V. Um, it tells you the formula right there. So there we got it. It's now V is equal to one-third pi R squared H. Now it's just a matter of plugging stuff in. It should be pretty easy, right? Um, so we know, let's right here, we have the height, that's four. We have the radius, that is two and three quarters. And whoops, hold on, you just fell into the trap that the GED set for you. Um, you need to know what the radius is. And the radius is not this. This is the distance from one side of the circle at the top to the other side. That is the diameter. Radius is from a point in the middle all the way out. It's half of the diameter. So we need to figure out what half of two and three fourths is. Now, if you've already watched a calculator video, a GED calculator video, you know how to do this. You know how to use the calculator to find half of that. You can turn that into a decimal, 2.75, and then divide it by two, or there's other ways to do it. I'm not going to go into them here. But anyway, that's wrong. So uh, we have figured out um, that this is half. This is the radius. It's half of the diameter. And we plug it in, we put it right in, like just type that into the calculator and we press enter and that is our answer. Ding. If you hadn't changed that, that's if you had like left it, you would get D. Like they, the GED laid a mine here and it just exploded and you fell into it and now you got it wrong. So just be careful. Even if, the, I guess the point here is that even if you know the formulas and you know the formula sheets, this is You'll see up at the top here, it's called mathematical reasoning. It's not just the math test. It's you have to think through stuff. So you need to know what a diameter is versus a radius and be careful, reason through things. All right, so that was our geometry question. Let's talk about algebra. Here we go. These are all vaguely algebraic. Um, and again, there's going to be a bunch of stuff that you need to know. If you're looking at this and you're like, what is this? Um, this isn't the video of me like explaining this formula and then explaining this formula. And then there, there are other videos you can, I'll link to as many as I can find that will explain y equals mx plus b and how to use it and stuff. Um, but I do want to give you basically an overview, a survey of what this stuff is and how to use it when you see it. So just like uh, the other part, this is also organized. The top stuff is, these are all graph formulas, things with like squiggly lines on those Cartesian x, y axes, a a axes, I think is plural. Um, there's a couple of quadratic related things. Um, Pythagorean theorem, got to have the Pythagorean theorem in there. Everyone loves the Pythagorean theorem. That's it's about triangles. And then there's like this random stuff at the end. I don't know, total cost, simple interest, whatever. Um, okay, let's uh, talk more about what this means. Again, feel free to pause the video and break this down um, because some of these things will be important. Like if you don't know what y equals mx plus b actually means, then it's not really helpful to you on the test. Um, m for some reason means slope. I have Googled pretty exhaustively to find out why slope is m and nobody has a good answer. 
or why B, this is the Y intercept here, is is what it is. But it is something you need to know. Um, these little like subscript ones means that it's like an actual point on a line, like the, the point is four comma six, and you just plug in four and six where it tells you to. Uh, these things, A, B, and C, are different from these things, A, B, and C. Just get familiar with what is being shown to you so that when you actually take the test, you will be ready um, to use these things. All right, so let's look at an algebraic question. Again, I stole this right from the GED. This one uh, is from some material they published on sample math questions. Um, what is the equation of the line that has a slope of negative seven and passes through the point four comma eight? All right, well, here we go. I'm going to use my flowchart. Do I need a formula? Yes, if I, I do need a formula. Um, in fact, this one is like kind of a gimme. This is like, if you see this, you should be pretty psyched because this is like, if you can figure out what the right formula to use is, this is gonna be a very easy question. Um, okay, so we need to find, what was it? They gave us the slope and they gave us a point. Well, what do you know? There's the point slope form of an equation. Here it is. That's what we're gonna use. Um, okay. Y minus Y1 equals M, which for some reason is slope, um, X minus X1 in parentheses. So remember, this is the point. Y1 is the point, X1 is the point. Um, there's a couple of tricky things to get through, but not that many. The slope we just put in here. Y1, um, this four comma eight, four is the X value and eight is the Y value. X always comes first, uh, just like in the alphabet. So um, four is gonna go right here. 8 is our y value. It's going to go right there. And there it is. We have a pretty straightforward, simple algebraic equation to solve now. Um, we just want to get, because like these things, like this is the answer. This is the right answer. We've already got the right answer now. But they don't look like this. We need something that looks more like one of these choices. So let's get all of the numbers together. Like you'll see here, all of them are equal to some integer um, let's figure out how to do that. So we're going to, uh, distribute this negative seven, negative seven, negative seven X, negative seven times negative four is positive 28. Great. Okay. Now we got to get rid of this eight. So it's on the same side. So we add eight to this side and add eight to this side. If I'm going too fast, um, then you can look up how to do, uh, solving equations on YouTube. I will have some more links for that, but hopefully you followed that. That's pretty standard stuff. Um, and then you have the y's and the x's on this side and the number itself on this other side. y plus 7x equals 36. I don't really see that here, but there's only one that has a 36, and it's not y plus 7x, it's 7x plus y. Does that matter? No, it turns out it doesn't. You can change the order of addition. It doesn't matter. So the answer is b. And that is one you have no hope of without knowing the formula. And maybe you're the kind of person who just loves to memorize formulas I don't know too many people like that. Um, all right, other stuff. There are two other stuffs. Um, I think, honestly, there should be two more other stuffs. I'm just going to add them here. They tell you the mean, the median. They should also tell you the mode and the range, or they should tell you none of these things. Um, it turns out that these four things will come up not just on the math test, but on social studies and science sometimes. Um, knowing what these words mean is important. And you'll notice also these aren't formulas. These are just like definitions. And I, it's hard to imagine on a time test, you're going to have a mean question and then sit down and like decipher what this actually means. Mean is like an average. You add up the number of things and then divide by the number of things you just added. Um, that will become more clear in a second. Median means middle. I always remember like the middle strip on a road is a median mode is most the thing that comes up the most the most common thing and range is the biggest number minus the smallest number it's the difference between the biggest and the smallest um, but these are bonus ones you don't really need to know um, apparently because they won't ask you if uh, it's not on this formula sheet and these two things are not on the formula sheet um, all right so sample other stuff questions 
This one is, <laughs> the first two questions were stolen from GED. This one, not so much. Um, all right. Raul decided to find out once and for all how many times his cat meowed between 8 a.m. and 1 p.m. He recorded the number of meows on the following table. Okay. Unfortunately for Raul, his cat ate his notes on the second hour's meows. However, he had already calculated that the mean number of hourly meows was 23. How many times did his cat meow between 9 and 10 a.m.? All right. So, again, do we need a formula for this? Uh, this one actually... Maybe not. Like, if you understand what um, mean is, then you don't need it. If, if you don't know what mean is, then it might be helpful to go back and read that definition again. But remember, it is um, mean. Yes, okay. Uh, it is all the numbers added up together, this plus this plus this plus this, divided by the number of things you just added. One, two, three, four, five. So we're going to add these numbers up and divide by five and that is our mean. Um, so maybe you need the formula, maybe you don't. All right, this is what it is. I don't know, I could leave this as a question mark. I turned it into an X because that's what we like to do in math is use X for things we don't know for variables um, and other things. I don't know why, why is it X? Why is slope M? Who knows? Uh, okay, so you add these all up you divide by 5, and you're going to get 23. How do you do this? Well, it's some basic algebra. I added up all the numbers. You get 93. X is still over here. I divided by 5. Can't really do anything there, so I'm going to have to multiply both sides of this equation by 5. I do anything to one side as long as I do it to the other side. So those 5s will cancel. That will leave me with X plus 93 is equal to 115. I'm getting closer, getting closer. What do I do here? That's right, ladies and gentlemen, you subtract... 93 from both sides. That gives us x is equal to 22. And what do you know? That's our answer. All right. That's it. Um, hopefully, I've given you enough of a foundation with all of this stuff so that when you see the formula sheet, you know how it works. If you really want to spend more time with it, I would encourage you to go back and um, freeze frame or just uh, download the formula sheet itself. I will have a link to the PDF that the GED publishes. They don't keep this secret. Um, and you'll just feel more confident and know your way around the weapons that have been given you on this test. All right, the final best advice that I can give you is the same as always. It is to like and subscribe to all my videos. Um, I made this a while ago. You can see the date here and I, there's no downvote anymore, sadly. I It's so unhelpful. YouTube, get your act together. I mean. I, I am personally saddened when people downvote me, and I can still see when you downvote me, but other people can't. And how, how are you supposed to know if a video is crap if you can only see the upvotes? Seriously. All right. That's the end of that. Good luck, everyone.